My name is Mike Nelson. I spend a lot of my time underwater because it's my occupation, but not usually under these kind of conditions. This assignment was different from anything I had ever attempted. I was working for Dr. Bradley at the university on a physiology problem that was familiar to every skin diver. How much could a swimmer improve his lung capacity by training? The wires I was wearing were connected to a machine that registered the stresses on the lungs and the cardiovascular system. After two weeks, my limit of endurance was up to one minute and 52 seconds, a 6% increase over the last test, but still a long way from the world's record established in 1913 by a Greek sponge diver. At the time, it was only an experiment. There wasn't the slightest inkling in my mind that all too soon my lung capacity would be put to a practical test and that two lives would depend on the success of my training. It was a few minutes later that a surprise phone call triggered the whole incident into being. You're doing just fine, Mike. Notice right here. Less stress than the last time, and you were under six seconds longer. Dr. Bradley. Yeah, he's right here. It's for you, Mike. Oh, I don't see how they do it, those Polynesian and Japanese pearl divers. You realize they stay down twice as long as I do? Hello? Hi, Mike. I've been paging you all over town. Uh, who's this? Jenny Wallace. Jenny, wow, nice to hear your voice. Thought you were in New York. When'd you get in town? About an hour ago. What are you doing back at school? I thought you already knew everything. <laughs> I'll tell you all about it when I see you. Where you stay? Hollywood Riviera. All right, I'll pick you up at seven. I'll see you then, huh? An old flame, Mike? Yeah, that's right. Past tense. See you in a moment, Doc. Right. <laughs> now, let me see that. The last thing I heard about you was that you were going to get married to some big millionaire. Uh, well, I forgot his name. What happened? I changed my mind. I guess I compared him to you. With or without his money, he came off a very bad second. Don't give me that. You know about all my faults. Namely, tightening up and swimming away from any kind of romance that looks as if it might become serious. Like you're doing right now. What are you doing out here again in sunny California, huh? Skin diving. Only I found a way to make it pay. You know how popular skin diving's become. Well, I took up photography along with it, and I talked the editor of Outdoor Sports into giving me a job as their underwater photographer. Mm. You're out here in an assignment then, huh? Well, not exactly. He wants to see a sample of my work first. Well, what are you going to show him? found out about a wreck off the coast of San Diego. A Japanese barge has never been photographed, so I thought I'd take a crack at it. Oh, that sounds interesting. Interesting enough for you to come along with me? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I just put my boat up in dry dock. Mm, that's no problem. I've got a boat all ready for charter. Well, I'm also tied up in this uh, research assignment at the university. Research? What are you wasting your time with that stuff for? You should be interested. We're trying to formulate a safety code for skin divers. Right now, we're working on uh, improving lung capacity in case anything should happen to a diver's equipment. That still leaves your weekends free, doesn't it? We could do it easily over a Saturday and Sunday. I'm sorry, Jenny. I'm not interested. What have you got against me? You don't remember, huh? What? That I told you to give up skin diving before you killed yourself and anyone else who was involved with you. That isn't fair, Mike. Now you're bringing up the past. That was three years ago. Will you give me credit for growing up a little since then? Everybody's entitled to a second chance, you know. Well, Mike Nelson. Golly, I haven't seen you in ages. No, not since last week. <laughs> Jenny Wallace, Johnny McGowan. Hi. It's a pleasure, Miss Wallace. Mike, I've been meaning to invite you down to the point. Been diving for lobster down there that big. How about uh, making a day of it Sunday and uh, bring along your beautiful friend here if you'd like? Oh, thanks, you're the same, Johnny, but uh, I'm busy at the university. I'm doing some work there. Ah, too bad. I was hoping you'd join me. Well, perhaps another time. It's been nice meeting you, Miss Wallace. My pleasure. Hope to run into you again soon. So long, Mike. So long, Johnny. Oh, well, looks like you made another conquest. It's easy with everyone but you. Waiter? Mike, I really need your help. This job means a lot to me. 
The following day, we modified conditions by raising the water temperature in the tank. I found I could remain more active in warmer water and sustain my breathing longer. The visit from Johnny McGowan was not unexpected. I had a hunch he'd be showing up sooner or later. It was sooner. Hey, Mike, what's this all about? Boy, you wired for sound? <coughs> oh, it's an endurance experiment. How long, Doc? Two minutes and six seconds. That's quite a jump, Mike. Two minutes and six seconds without equipment? Boy, that's terrific. No, it's really only fair. What brings you here, Johnny? Oh, I just thought I'd drop around, say hello, see what you're up to. Yeah. Okay, Mike. Your uh, friend, Miss Wallace. Is she a skin diver? Oh, she's done a little. You uh, think she'd like to go diving for lobsters with me? Uh, how do I know? Would you mind? I got no strings attached to her. Well, uh, where would I find her? Hollywood Riviera Hotel. Thanks, old buddy. I'll do the same for you sometime. I was at home reading up on some scientific data when the doorbell rang. Hi, Mike. Sorry to bother you. I was wondering if you could help me out with something. What's your problem? Sit down. Well, you, you know that uh, helium nitrogen mixture you used the last time I was out with you? Yeah. I thought I'd like to give it a try. How deep do you plan to dive? Well, I don't know. I just thought I'd like to have it along in case. I'm going down to San Diego with Jenny over the weekend. The wreck we're going to photograph. Well, you're not ready for that, Johnny. Oh, look, I've been out with some expert divers lately, Mike. They say I handle myself real well. Sure, you do. But you just took up skin diving about six months ago. I can take care of myself. Don't worry. You need a diving buddy that you can trust, and it's not Jenny, believe me. Well, why isn't it? I don't know. Some people are just not cut out to be skin divers, that's all. I started to teach Jenny skin diving about three years ago, and... I know, I know, Mike. She told me all about that. Well, did she tell you about the last time? The time that she and I and a kid named Bob Engel went out exploring underwater caves off the New England coast? No. I gave explicit directions before we dove. We had a whole set of underwater signals. And when we got down there, my regulator wasn't working properly, so I signaled I was going to go up and fix it. But they were to stay put, and I'd be right back. Well, Ginny decided she'd go deeper. Bob tried to stop her, but she wouldn't pay any attention to him. See, he figured that she shouldn't go off alone, so he followed her down into a depth that he'd never been before. He got panicky and came up too fast. Boy, that was the worst attack of Ben's that I've ever seen. Just luck we happen to have a decompression chamber aboard ship. You didn't have to follow her. That's not the point. We were to work together, not take any chances. She told me you'd be jealous because she turned you down. She turned me down? Oh, you know she didn't, Mike. Look, I don't want any favors. I'll rent your equipment. Well, I'm sorry, it's not available. Okay, I'll get it someplace else. Well, this is an unexpected pleasure. I thought you were all tied up at school learning your lessons. Johnny came over to see me last night. He says he's going to San Diego with you. That's right. He's not Mike Nelson, but I need somebody. You know if he can handle this kind of a job? He says he can. But you don't really know if he can or not. He's aware of the problems involved, and he's not afraid. It isn't a question of being afraid. It's a question of experience, and he hasn't got any. And he's not going to get any help from you. Now, what makes you so sure of that? He's willing to trust me. Bob Engel trusted you, too. That was my fault. And that was an accident. It was no accident. I was there, remember? Let go of me. Go on. Get out of here. Jenny, I'm thinking of you as well as of him. The two of you just wouldn't make a team. Well, why don't you give this all up, huh, before it's too late? I'm not going to. And if you're so worried about your friend, why don't you take over for him? When are you going to leave? Tomorrow morning. You got a boat? All set, I'm waiting in San Diego. Is there a compressor aboard? A brand new one. Mike, you don't have to worry about anything this time. Honest, I'll do anything you say, please. 
Well, Mike, what do you say? Do I call Johnny and tell him to forget all about it? On one condition. If after working with you, I still feel it's not safe for you to be a skin diver, you'll give it up. It's a deal. Uh, better uh, keep this uh, strictly business this time, huh? I'll uh, pick you up tomorrow morning. About uh, five o'clock. Yeah, come on in. Doors unlocked. Come on in. I just wanted to say thanks for the double cross. I'm sorry, Johnny. Yeah, you're sorry. Nobody gets ahead of Mike Nelson, do they? Not in skin diving with girls or anything else. I said I was sorry, and I admit I did double cross you. But it was for your own good, believe it or not. Yeah, well, you still double cross me. That's all you got to say. You said it. Now, I'm sorry. I got a lot of work to do, and I've got to get up early in the morning. Oh, there's one more thing, Mike. Yeah. You got it out of your system now? Or would you like to go a few rounds? The chartered boat was waiting for us when we arrived at San Diego. For a moment, my misgivings faded away at the prospect of a pleasant weekend. Oh, excuse me, Captain Mariani, this is Mike Nelson. Tanto gusto, señor. Igual amante. This is where we're going. How long do you think it'll take? We make it easy in three hours, señorita. Uh, you sure this is the spot where that... Uh, that barge is? That's what I was told. Why? Well, I did a lot of diving in that area. I never saw any signs of a wreck. It's not there. I've just thrown away $50. Best thing for us to do is to go out there and see. Uh, let's check a couple of things first, huh, Captain? Did you get a weather report? The weather will be calm and clear all weekend. That's good. Oh, another thing. Uh, we both have two tanks apiece. As soon as one of them's empty, see that it's filled immediately from the compressor, so it'll be ready for use. Right Yo comprendo. I will take care of everything. Good. It sure is great to be working with you again, Mike. Like old times. If we get the kind of pictures I expect, there'll be a lot of publicity in it for you. I bet we can get a contract from the magazine to team up for more assignments. Well, let's get these pictures first, shall we? Here, test your air. Aye, aye, sir. Señorita, very soon we'll reach a spot. Good. I'll go below and change, sir. Amigo! According to the chart, this is the place. Okay, Captain. All set, Mike. Where do you think you're going with that? My camera? Why, I'm going to take pictures. Still a eager beaver, huh? Always in a rush. But, Mike, I'm paying for this boat by the hour. I'd like to save a little money if I can. Let's find out if that barge is down there first. Plenty of time later to take pictures. Okay, Mike. Whatever you say. Now, you got any questions about these instructions I gave you? No. You will follow them this time, won't you? Yes, Mike, I will. Well, you better. Go on. Now, we get down there, watch for my signals. Do exactly what I tell you to do. You don't have to dive very deep. Bottom's only about 50 feet here. All right, let's get wet. Buena suerte and good hunting. No matter how many times you go underwater, there's always a new thrill, a feeling of conquest. It was that way as Ginny followed me into the depths below the sea. Gradually, day turned into night, and man's world of sun and air and earth turned into the silent murkiness of another world. We were 42 feet down when I thought I saw something. I signaled to Ginny. We swam forward, but there was nothing there. 
I thought I'd seen the silhouette of a hull, but uh, it had only been a school of fish. We tried a different spot. Several times we thought we saw the barge, but it proved to be a mirage. The undersea currents can conjure up momentary images of things that are not there, just like the rays of the sun do on land. We kept swimming around until our air started to run low. And then we saw it. Ginny wanted to take a closer look at it, but there wasn't time. We only had about five minutes of air left in our tanks. Even though we weren't very deep, that was the margin needed for a safe ascent. I signaled to her that we were going up. Ginny followed me up. So far, everything was going perfectly. You found it? Yep. Can I take my camera down now? No, nope, not yet. I want to check the inside of that barge first before you start taking any pictures. I want to make sure that it's safe. We had time to do that while we were down there. We only had a few minutes of air left. Don't take any chances. Can I get that through your pretty little head? We got the whole weekend. Hey, now when you're down there, you wait. Let me check that barge before you move in. Okay, okay, let's go. Be sure you fill those tanks with air. I take care of it, senor. If I had known what was happening aboard the ship, things might have been different, but maybe not. Normally, we had enough air for the exploratory descent and then enough to spare to return above for the pictures. We went straight down to the barge. I signaled to Jenny to wait for me until I surveyed the wreck. I started to check over the barge. This was the dangerous part. The barge was made up of concrete and was broken in places. One false step here and a diver could be trapped. to caution Ginny, but she wasn't behind me. I had a sudden hunch that she'd only reverted to form, and in the excitement of discovery, I decided to do a little exploring on her own. I headed for the other side of the barge. she was, caught in the reinforcement steel rods of the broken concrete of the hull. And trying to get loose, she had only become more entangled. signaled her to remain still. I'd have to surface to get a crowbar to pry her loose. Her air was starting to run low. I filled my lungs with air as deeply as I could, then took off my tank and put it within Ginny's reach, in case she should need it before I returned. She understood. One thing to be said for Ginny, she didn't scare easily. What <laughs>
that filled the tanks, that miserable compressor conked out again. Conked out? Sometimes she works, sometimes no. Today, no. Oh. Something wrong? She's trapped down there. She's only got about 10 minutes of air left, including my tank that I left with her. Madre de Dios, what do we do now? Why did you tell her she had a new compressor? I didn't tell her nothing about new compressor, senor. Oh, that girl. Give me some kind of an iron, huh? Something that I can try with? Here, senor. Radio the Coast Guard. Tell them what's happened. Tell them we need air. I radio them right now, senor. I filled my lungs. The lab experiment was going to be put to practical use. With luck, the Coast Guard might possibly reach us before Ginny's air ran out. But we couldn't count on it. My endurance had been up to two minutes and six seconds. But that was in the lab, in warm water. This water was icy cold. I tried to keep a mental note of the seconds sticking off. But even before I reached Jenny, I felt that my lungs were going to explode. attempt to pry her loose, but even as I tried, I knew I couldn't do it on this dive. My arms felt like lead. I couldn't hold my breath any longer. I signaled that I'd be back. I thought I'd never reach the surface. Any second, I thought I'd have to give up. They will be here in less than 30 minutes, senor. She's only got three minutes of air left. As I reached Ginny's side again, I knew that this had to be the last dive. With hardly any air left, there wouldn't be time to surface and come down again. If I didn't succeed now, in a matter of seconds, she'd be dead. A strange sensation was starting to overcome me. I had no strength left. Nothing mattered now, not even self-preservation. I knew that any second now, Ginny would be out of air. I made a last desperate attempt with a crowbar. I heard a crack. The reinforcing rod that imprisoned Ginny bent backwards. I pulled Ginny out and we surfaced towards safety with our last breath. You don't have to say it, Mike. I'll never go skin diving again. Ever. Yes, you're right. I just wasn't cut out for it. I thought you would never come up, senor. You know how long you were down this last time without a diving long? Three minutes. I'm Lloyd Bridges. Skin diving is fun and adventure for young and old, but it can be dangerous. So know the sport well and don't take any chances. Be with you next week for another exciting sea hunt.